All right. Thanks well, for all the yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is this is good. Thank you. And this is our last session, but I think we're going to have one more. I think we're, I did talk to Alice about doing a workshop more into analytics, uh, a little bit more of a hands-on workshop, and she's totally in. So we'll organize that. Is it, which would be a really good. So last one to do, once I throw a whole bunch of this stuff at you, it'd be good for us to kind of get a little bit down and dirty into your websites. I did get one sent to me to do an audit um, on the website. So please do, like say, if you guys want audits done on your site, just, just forward it to me and I'll flip it over. I was away most, most of last week, so I'm behind a little bit, but um, I will get it to you guys if anybody wants an audit done on their site, okay? Yeah. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Can you send me the link, please? No. Um, so, no, no, I'm joking. So a little bit about um, today, we're just going to have some fun talk about trends. So, so we're going to talk about what we're seeing and, and I'm a foodie. So that's why this first slides are all, we're going to talk about cooking up success in 2024. So we're going to have some fun around that. Um, you guys, this is the third time with me, but I thought I'll tell you a little bit about me. So I actually started in the marketing industry back in uh, 2000. That's when I first started. I, um, I did work client side quite often. And then I went and started my own agency. I did a, I went to New York when I was in university and went to Wall Street and fell in love with like, I'm going to go be, I'm going to go into finance and went and got all my certifications, worked for Nesbitt Burns. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what have I done? I hate this. So I left and went back into marketing. Um, I started an agency world in 2006 in Kamloops uh, with an agency called Reagan Advertising. It was sort of like the le leading agency at the time. And our account was National Sport Mart. I don't know if you guys remember National Sport Mart. So now they're Sport Check today. They got sold by the to the Forzani Group, and we managed the whole account across Canada, which was we did everything from the price tags to updating the like it was crazy. It was owned by a guy named Kevin Jardine in Kamloops. So I got to work at a pretty big account. Um, I'm cautiously all in on AI, maybe almost too much. I'm like infatuated by AI, and I try to look where we see opportunities and. and just the new one for me is Sora. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's the video one that just came out. It's freaking insane. It's it's not out yet to public. Um, my marketing idol, Seth Godin, I got to see him speak a couple times. I don't know if you guys know Seth Godin. He's a great marketing read, really easy to read, really if you like podcasts, he's really great. He really sort of like, for me, really dumbed it down, which was great when I first started in the world, so in the marketing world. So if you haven't read anything from Seth Godin, I recommend just grabbing some books. He's got some really good ones. I'm a big football fan, but European football, so soccer. Um, that's, that's what I grew up playing and coaching and I uh, watch a lot of it and then I have to have my coffee. So thanks for the coffee because I didn't get one today on the way in. So thank you for that. So, <laughs> so I want to look a little bit what we saw in 2023 and I know we're already a few months into 24 and then we'll jump into some trends. Um, AI, obviously, I won't spend a lot of time on that. We can do a whole session on just AI, like literally. And, and at the end of this deck, which we'll, I think we're, we're sharing all the decks, is I put a bunch of lists of AI software or tools that you guys can go and explore as well. Just some ones, and not your typical chat GPTs. I put some other ones for you to, to have a look at. There might be opportunity for you guys to look into, but it's, it's really changed what everything that we do for sure. Um, I'm curious, a little bit of a, a test maybe is, of these four images, which one of these is AI generated? So these are, one of these is AI generated. Which one do you guys think is AI generated? Just top right, okay, any, any else? This one? Okay. So, so we got an answer for all of them pretty much? So every single one of these is AI generated. It's crazy. I just to show the power of, of where, and, and I, I bet you if I redid them now, because this, this slide is a few months old, it would have, I would have done this just before the uh, Christmas. I would have done it around Christmas time for a presentation I was doing. And it's not like, but it's crazy how realistic these are. These are all AI generated. And if I saw, I should have showed you the first one I did years, like way back when, when ChatGPT first launched this, it was terrible. It looked like a cartoon, it was terrible. Now it's so realistic, it's so realistic, right? So it's, that's, this is where it's going. Like it's crazy where it's going, right? So, no, this is a combination of ChatGPT and, uh, yeah, Dolly and Gemini. Gemini, what do they call it? What's the, the Google, they changed it. I think it's called Gemini now, the, the mic. Yeah, so I've kind of played around a little bit of everything on really? it. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Where do they get the facials from? The what, sorry? Like, where do they get all these facials from? From the robot, AI robot. Like, really, like, honestly, it they just go pulls. Searching the internet for 
yeah. Pictures of people or do they generate? Oh no, people? it's generated. This is actually, they, they created, like they, they, they created based of all, like because AI is a robot that's learning, for lack of a better word, and it's, it's a robot that's smarter than a human. So they've made up a face? Correct. Okay. So you'll never walk into that face? Honestly. Not in the street. Well, you might. You might say when it looks like someone, but it's, but now, the, the, the downside of this is that I don't know, will it create that same image for my competitor? I don't know. Like that, that's where we don't really use a lot. We don't use a lot of these. Like I don't actually, I don't think we've ever used an AI generated image for our clients. Um, I use it for inspiration. So if I'm working with a client and I'm like, here's an idea I have, I let this create it so we can look at it and go, what do you think? Does this fit? And you're like, oh, it looks good. I like the tone. I like, and then we'll go create our own because my, like just, there's a lot of legalities. Like, do you own this image? Do you not? Like, I don't know. Right now you do because there's nothing around it. But I mean, I just want to show the power. Like, it's crazy. Like, this is not like it's been 50 years in the making. Like, and in, in it's literally over months. Now the video is e even crazier than this, right? So it's, cre it's animating, creative video. Just, um... Because I, I know a few people that have taken it actually the pictures. Yeah. Like they, and then they, they've done the AI and did the picture. Right. So they own that picture Correct. and they've just enhanced it and put whatever they want into it. Yeah. So, so I, I guess you can get around the ownership with that. I. Well, right now you own these. Like, like so, anything like if ChatGPT writes a blog post for you, right now there's nothing against that says you can't do it. Like zero. Now, I'm assuming it's going to change. They're going to have to do something around that. But as of today, you own it, right? So the argument is, you asked about, say it's the bots learning from stuff that we're doing, right? You're putting things in, it's searching the internet. The, the argument, this is what Google had, is like, well, we own that stuff. Or Facebook, they say we own it and you're searching. But I don't know, do you? Because does Google own the world? I don't know, like all the internet ever? Like that's, what the, that's where the argument is right now. So, yeah. What if, so the top left photo, you generate that one and then your competitor also happens to generate the same image, then yeah. who owns it? I, I don't think I don't think anyone in my opinion I don't think anyone really owns the you can use them but I don't think there's copyright on any of this stuff yet yeah like unless it's like Robin said like so you can upload your own images or your own video like I can upload my own video and get it to create other videos and that would be a little bit different and that's where I think AI is missing like that it doesn't it doesn't come into my place of business and film the place of business and take photos like that's where it's missing now maybe there'll be bots down the road that come do that, but today, it, it, but there, like right now there isn't. Like that's where it's missing. It's that, it's that connection that, that's why I'm not worried about AI replacing, I, today anyways, you know, probably in my lifetime, maybe, maybe it will, but right now it can't because it can't create your festival pictures. It can't create your real estate, pit, like, cause you can say, make it look like a house. Sure, it'd be a house in the middle of who knows where. It's not gonna look, so that's where it's missing right now. But I'm saying the power of where it's going is pretty amazing where it's going. So, yeah. So it's not necessarily authentic to a location. No, but I like it, like I said, for stock images. Yeah. So if you're, if you're doing stock images or stock video, it's good. If you want your own, it can't replace that. There's no way it's going to replace that. So, or right now, anyway, so. How long does it take you to make one of those images? Like, oh, how many like, times do you have to go back and forth and... Oh, like literally, well, I see, you'll create the first, you'll create the first one with literally within second, like literally a minute, let's say, like really fast, but yeah. Um, there's no way I spent more than five minutes on it. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty good. Like in fairness, I've been using ChatGP a lot and I'm pretty good at prompts and, but someone for the first time, like the first time I created an image, I should probably try to pull it up. It looked like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can't even show anyone. It was terrible. Like I, mean, I tried it and yeah, they come out terrible. So I'm like, oh man, how many prompts do you have like, oh, yeah. to get the nice, you know, sunset glow? Or yeah. Whatever. And it's fair, like today's version is way better than even three months ago. Yeah. Right. That's the thing. It's, it's always updating, always being better. Right. So. Maybe we need to do an AI session. There seems like there's a lot of interest in AI. But, um, a big thing that we saw in 2023 is called predictive analysis. So people ask, what is that? So basically what we've been able to do in marketing is predict what customers are going to do and be able to 
uh, get in front of it, right? So you can predict when and when a customer is likely to purchase next or when they might leave or when, like it, there's, once you get all that data, like for instance, Kinney and Tire has been using this for a while or maybe Sportcheck or whoever these big brands that when it rains, you're gonna see umbrella ads in your feed. And when you change your Facebook status to from single to we're engaged, you start seeing wedding ads into rings and like, so that's that we're predicting what people's patterns are and we're getting ahead of our, our real time we're we'll able to not like, oh, now I gotta go create a database and oh, it's raining, I should go into my database and create an email and say, come in because come buy an umbrella. Well, it just automatically does it for you, right? So there's, there's a lot of what we're seeing now. Now it's all based on your CRM and I'm a big fan, we'll talk a little bit about it. Like you need to build a good database of clients. Like that's how you're going to create predictive analysis. So, and there's software that does this stuff. You're like, well, how do I do that? Like again, MailChimp has amazing stuff built into it. Right, so it already does that. So we're seeing a lot of that. Do you guys know what sentiment analysis is? We're seeing a lot more of this. So you can actually go in. Unfortunately, right now it's really freaking expensive to do it. So only, not all brands can do it, but where you can see how people feel about your brand, right? So you can actually search and say, what have they said about Check Creative? Are they using it in the internet somewhere? Or they say like, so this is really like a lot of the bigger brands are like it's important to them, like a Lululemon or a Coke or a Pepsi, they're running this stuff constantly, but we're starting to see it at our level. Like we're starting to see some of it. Uh, we have a tool called SEM Rush. I think I mentioned it's what we used to run our, our analysis is that it has some of this stuff built into it. So you'll search internet, you'll search all social channels and say, have they talked about our business? Have they talked about your business? What are people saying about your business, good, bad, or indifferent? And you can actually manage it that way, which is really cool. So it's a little bit new. It's been around, but it's been coming to our level, which is nice because it used to be only available to the big brands. So we're seeing a lot of that in 2023. Um, video ads everywhere, right? Everything, these are like, everything is video, but you can see all the different formations. They're typically, they're typically most videos are shot this way now for, for social media purposes, obviously, but you can see video has been big in 2023 and then TikTok. We've seen a massive growth in TikTok for sure. Like really, like I said, we saw it a lot in the news side and we're starting to see it more and more here in our markets as well. So we're starting to see a lot more people. It's funny though, cause we're seeing really good engagement, but when at the event that we did in Quayo, the Quayo Lodge, I think, I don't know, three people put up their hand or four people put up their hand that they're on TikTok. So who's on TikTok here? I think I asked, but is it who's on TikTok? Just one, so two, two of us. That's what I mean, like to, when you ask around, but when we run campaigns and posts, like they do, it does really well in our region. Like it actually does really. The other one, actually, I should have brought it up before is actually what we're seeing. We see a lot of use of Pinterest in the Okanagan. Pinterest is really high. There's lots of high use of, and, and it's usually a neglected platform. People like Facebook and Instagram, but Pinterest, if it's the right vertical, right? For real estate, food, all, it's actually fashion. There's some really good stuff that you can do on Pinterest as well, right? And Pinterest actually has Pin TV now where you can upload video and you can do live streams. You can do, it's pretty cool actually. I'm a Pinterest person because I'm a foodie. So I use it for like recipes and stuff all the time. So, yeah. How do you use Pinterest? Yeah. I can find recipes. Um, and then uh, lots of uh, live, live videos, lots of live streams we're seeing, and we'll talk a little about that in a second. So um, more and more people are, uh, are moving in this direction, and I'll talk to you about why we're, why we're seeing this, because there's an opportunity for you, everybody in this room to start doing that sort of stuff. So maybe if we can move forward. So we're gonna talk now, what we came to talk about is 2024 and, and I had to change this slide instead of what we'll see in 2024, what we'll continue to bring because we're already a couple months into it. So what we think we're going to see moving forward. Um, one of the things that uh, data showing in 2024 is actually there's a massive, this is worldwide, like there's gonna be a trillion, over a trillion dollars in, uh, in marketing spent, like marketing dollars spent this year. Like it's, there's an increase. Um, I think obviously just because of all the social channels, people are going into different platforms and obviously the big players are always the ones leading this, but there's a, there's a lot of money out there going into marketing, 
right? So in advertising, so that's, which is pretty crazy, which is an 8% increase, which is really, really high for you considering. But in fairness, we came off a couple of years of really crappy advertising because of the, the pandemic. So, um, so what we're seeing, so one thing is mar marketing automation. And this is one area that I'd actually like to see a lot of us, like in our region, just do more of is letting AI tools really do some automation for us. Right, Buy, get us back some time in the day. If there's, is there things that AI audit can do that will automate processes like emails? Email is a big one. Someone signs up for an email, adds to the database, sends an email out. If they don't respond, another email goes out. If they click on this, a different, and you can set it all up. So you're like, oh, how am I gonna? You do it once, right? And Mailchimp will do the rest of it for you. Or right, Rob want text? They'll send a text out instead. Like you, you have to set it up. I get it, but I think there's opportunities to automate some of this stuff. Like we work with a company. Um, we just kind of formed a partnership called in-house. Um, uh, got a Kelowna, owns a young kid out of Kelowna. He is young, 24 years old, but he's, uh, he started his own sort of AI integration business. We partnered with him because we're not, I, I'm an AI person, I use it, but we're not an AI experts. Like we can't come build custom AI tools for people. That's what they do. So they've been working with a lot of our clients, like everything from a dentist, how, how do we automate the process in the dental practice for him to take some of the AI, like the automation out of there or into it, um, to real estate? Um, I know, I know Remax, to, who do you, who, what, who, what broker do you with? Sorry? You already broke, okay. So Remax just did an AI conference in Kelowna last Wednesday, like with all their, with all their realtors, right? And how they can use AI um, in their practice day to day. Right, so there's some really neat things that they can start doing in that. So we're seeing a lot, and this is an area that's going to continue to grow. Right, okay, um, I've seen, and I think we're seeing this in numbers. There's actually a social media decline, right? So if you look, what what when you're looking at these charts, so the top one is B two B, so business to business, and B two C, business to consumer. So you can see that. 80, 84 and 82 percent of the traffic is coming from organic or direct traffic. So organic is someone searching for you, so SEO, someone searching find you on the internet. Direct, they're typing in your your business direct to go in there, right? So you look at social, you start seeing social how, which is the light pink, it's actually pretty small, paid, and then you'll see email as well on here. But people are not coming; they're they're in social. They're using social, but they're not coming to your website from social. There's a difference, right? So we're seeing a lot of people like, I'm not saying social isn't powerful, it is. Just, just keep in mind that a lot of people aren't leaving sometimes and coming to your website. So when we do Facebook campaigns, we'll have the lead forms right within Facebook. So people don't have to leave Facebook. If you're interested, just fill the form. LinkedIn's the same way. You can do a LinkedIn campaign, there's a LinkedIn form. And the cool thing about LinkedIn, for instance, or Facebook, it'll populate the form for you because it knows it's Rob, it's all filled out for me. So when I, when I push a, a lead, yeah. So LinkedIn, Yeah. when you <clears throat> set a form, so can you give an example of what you would use LinkedIn for bits for events or activities? Because I just think of it as a personal, business connection yeah, I think about I, using it to promote our events. So. Yeah, and I would probably say you're right. Oh. Yeah, so LinkedIn, LinkedIn is definitely more of a, a B2B sort of connect. We see lots of value. In, you, one, the last thing you want to do on B2B, and sorry on LinkedIn, is, we'll talk, I have a slide on LinkedIn, but um, is to sell. Right, people don't want to be sold on LinkedIn. It's, it's the uh, people that are on there are more great for connection, a lot of thought leadership, like, like write our, if remember we talked last time about writing blogs linkedin's a great place for the blogs to go if you do video linkedin's a great place for blog to go right so but if it's more of a b2b connection for sure than more of like hey we have an event this week and come to it that i would i wouldn't use linkedin for that yeah for your like for social when you're getting people to sign up for your newsletter or something are you creating yeah. something like people are making it that you're providing through that form or people are just doing it Depen it depends what yeah it depends what we're doing sometimes we do but the majority of the time we don't like a lot of our clients don't have the capacity to write white papers and yeah. and those sort of things so typically it's it's um, um, 
I'm just trying to think of the most recent one that we're doing. Dental, we do. Actually, we do. Our dental client in Kelowna just kills it on Facebook. And, it, and it's a lot of, it's video based. So we do, we'll do things like, uh, we'll update it about every two to three months. We'll do the internet's most asked questions about dental, about dentists. So we literally Google, we find the top five things. We ask him the question. He records it. We throw it up on Facebook as a video and it might be, you know, hey, I, like I get a headache all the time and it's like he talks about how it's, uh, you know, because you might grind your teeth at night and then just if you're interested to learn more, click here and, and that, that sort of thing, like those, that's a simple one, but that we're using a lot of that, a lot of that and it's a form right within Facebook. So you, you don't have to even leave it, you just, it, and we find those convert really well, those convert really well. Um, LinkedIn, we talked about, I'm a fan of LinkedIn. I actually think it's still underutilized. If, if this, you know, if you're like a B2B market, I actually think it's super underutilized. Um, I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. I don't know if you guys know of Gary Vaynerchuk, but he's really on this as well. Like LinkedIn is very, very underutilized right now. And I think most people go on, they t typically people have profiles. <laughs> You don't do much with it, right? But it's actually that I'm I'm fairly active on LinkedIn as much as I hope to be. But we actually get quite a bit of connections and leads, and I use it a lot to like. So if if I want to meet somebody, the first thing I do is I connect with them on LinkedIn, send a quick note. And then when I send the email, they're like, "Oh yeah, Rob, I connect with them." And so I, even when I send proposals now to clients, I usually just put in my LinkedIn profile. Say, so, "Hey, you can go like go to my LinkedIn profile. You can see that because I write on there, so you can kind of see my tone and who I." Am and they get to know you at a different level because they get to see what I write about and so forth. So from a B2B perspective, it's actually a really good, and the beauty of LinkedIn now is I can, you can target right down to like the business level or, or job title level. So we have clients that are in telematics. So telematics is tracking like vehicles and you're driving around and a lot of their um, uh, business they do is municipal and they know which, which category or which department in, in, within the local government they talk with. Well, I can go and say, I only want people that work for the city of Calgary that have this title to see my ad. Super, super granular on what you can do with LinkedIn on that level. Yeah. So I use my profile actually when businesses need more information yeah. about me. Yeah. Because I don't have a website. Right. You know, so I will send that to businesses and then they can see my, just my history, right? So, and it, so it's, I use that all the time. It's almost like your resume. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and it's, it's easy for people to click in there mm -hmm. and see where I've worked and what I've done. Yeah, and there's two sides of LinkedIn. There's pay to play, like everything else, but you can just organically, right? So if you're if you're active organically, you're you're posting, you're commenting on people's posts, you're connecting with people. Like there's that doesn't cost anything other than time, right? So you, there's two sides to LinkedIn. And then that last side, I was saying even if you're writing, you can boost on LinkedIn. So I can put a blog post up, and I can say I'm going to boost it out, but I only want this these type of people to see it. And those are the only people that see it. So it stays out of sort of feeds that are just general impressions. It gets pretty targeted impressions. The one thing I do find though, it's uh, your cost per lead on LinkedIn is not cheap, right? It's not, it's not a cheap place to play, but I'm, my mindset is I'd rather have quality leads than just a bunch of leads. So I'm okay paying a little bit more. If I'm gonna get a good quality lead, then it's not an ego exercise where I'm like, oh, look at all the leads I got, but I didn't convert anybody. I'd rather get one lead and convert, right? So I think that, but I don't use it. So my mindset of LinkedIn, and this is the way I've sort of used LinkedIn is I, I, don't, I don't use it to get business. That's my, it has to be my mindset because if, if you seem desperate about getting business on LinkedIn, people will not work with you. You just, you gotta be willing to connect and it's it's kind of, a, it's sort of the Facebook for business is kind of how I look, cause I don't play on Facebook cause I don't wanna hear what you ate for dinner yesterday. So uh, I don't, like I'm just person, I don't know, it's just the way I am, like I don't know, like, <laughs> but I find that's what Facebook is or, or is a lot of hate. Like I find there is, like we just, we're at, there's none of that on LinkedIn. If you do it on LinkedIn, they'll literally shut your account down. And we, I've, I've seen it happen. So I find it's just a, it's like kind of, to me it's like this. Like to me it's, this, this is the real life LinkedIn where I can connect with business owners and talk to people and hey, I can share and hey, I know someone that can help you here. That's, if you go with that mindset, it's a pretty valuable place to play. Are you on there, are you on it every day? No. No, I'm not. I did, I did an experiment. 
I don't know who, if anyone follows me on LinkedIn. I did an experiment before Christmas. I wrote every day using AI. Yeah, I wanted to see engagement, bad engagement, and to a T, the ones I didn't write with AI are still getting amazing posts. My AI stuff, barely anything. I just was curious. I was curious on what engagement LinkedIn would push out. So I, I'd put a topic into ChatGPT and say, write me a LinkedIn post this long about this topic. And I would literally, I would edit it just a bit, but it was just wanted to see. And you know, and I did all the proper things, tagged it, put the image. But if I wrote personal stuff on, like my, wrote myself, 10 times the engagement. So it just shows like, yeah, and it's to me, LinkedIn doesn't have to be one that you have to go spend hours a day, honestly, like five minutes a day, go see what's happening in your feed, comment, like, whatever, post once in a while. Like I, I would say post when you got something to say, like don't just make noise. So people always, how often should I post when you have something to say? If you don't have anything to say, valuable for two weeks, it's okay. Like I think LinkedIn's good for that too. It's not like you have, it's not like, um, TikTok, where you literally need to be on TikTok like every day, where the, you don't have to with LinkedIn. Yeah. It, but for us, like if you're looking more for professional networking, this is the platform to be on still by far. By far. That's always um, what makes me hesitant sometimes is how much more time. Like every time there's a new platform, that takes more time out of your day. But mm -hmm. if you're saying five, <laughs> I'm, I have the mobile version and like I did this morning, showed up like, you know, I had a few minutes before I just went into LinkedIn and, you know, I liked, commented, whatever, and then we're done with it. And I probably won't be back on it today if I'm busy. It's okay, right? So, um, and I, I would say my answer to like, there's all these platforms, just pick one. Like I said, don't, you don't have to be everything to everybody. Now I'm not saying LinkedIn is the one to pick. Pick the one that's most beneficial to your business, but just pick one and be really good at it than rather have four and be crappy at all four of them, right? Just be, pick one, it's okay, right? So. Thank you for the permission. Don't be crappy at four of them. Uh, <laughs> um, amplifying your content. This is a really big thing. And again, going back to Gary Vee, this is a really big thing we're pushing to our clients is that Create one piece of content. Again, I went back to your blog and then push it through all your channels, right? So think about, we'll do that now. There's that, we'll be able to create a blog and then there is technology now that you can throw it into, you know, create a video, not a, not, I'm not talking about the Sora video, just be an actual little video, sorry, create for you. Chat, chat GPT will write your post for you and you throw it all of a sudden onto every single one of the platforms, right? And I'm not saying, no, pick again, pick the platforms that fit your business. So don't go into Snapchat if you're not trying to reach, you know, 17 year olds, that's fine. Like, but, but pick the ones that do, but amplify your content on all the channels because everybody's different. Like everybody in this room probably uses social different. Like I'm on LinkedIn, you won't talk to me on Facebook, you won't talk to me on Instagram. Like I'm just not on those channels, but I'm probably, someone that businesses want to talk to, right? So, but you're not talking to me on those. You're not going to reach me on those channels, but you'll reach me on probably LinkedIn. You, I would see it. And maybe sometimes I'm an X person still just because I'm like, I like short things. So it's like, okay, I can read a topic. And if I'm interested, I'll dig deeper. But other than Twitter and LinkedIn, you don't find me on that, right? So, so there's different way or YouTube. I am a YouTube user, right? So people will, will be, Take that content and push it through all the platforms that you can. We're definitely seeing a lot of that. Yeah. Sorry. So instead of Twitter, the threads that is linked with Instagram, mm -hmm. that's essentially like supposed to be more positive than Twitter. Is that or X? Is that yeah. kind of the take on it? Like what's Threads hasn't really taken off though. Unfortunately, like you're talking about the actual platform thread. Yeah, Threads hasn't really taken off. I think we're we're seeing a lot more of is like YouTube Shorts has done really well. Um, uh, threads has in our market, I don't like, I don't think we have, I'm just, I was trying to think through if there's any clients that we have. I don't think we have one client that's using threads right now, but yes, the idea was it's supposed to be more of that. It was like competitor to like a place to place video, a little bit more positive, a little bit more B2B. That's kind of the idea behind it. It just hasn't taken off yet in my mind. Right. But all these platforms like YouTube has YouTube shorts and Instagram has their, like their video. And I didn't put Pinterest on here, but Pinterest has pin TV. Like they've all kind of created their own channel for like video within it as well. To me still for video, 
um, YouTube is the place, on, and we'll talk about it in a second. Like YouTube, it's the second largest search engine. Like I said, if people are searching Google and then they don't go to, they don't find a Google, they're searching YouTube. It's the second biggest one. We're seeing tons of activity on it, um, and it, your channels grow pretty quickly. If when you, it's all about activity. That's a, that's the downside of YouTube. Again, is to grow following. You need to be active. You can't post. It's not where I said LinkedIn. You need to be posting stuff pretty constantly. If you guys need video created though, you can just, there's someone right here that can help you create video. So. <laughs> Mike's the one that told us we were missing a lot of traffic by not being on YouTube, not having a YouTube channel. Yes, yeah. And we started it and we get, I'm, I'm happy with it. It's more. Yeah, I mean, be realistic too. If we're in our, if, if your market is this, is Armstrong, like, be realistic. We're not going to get a million views on our, on our, and it's okay though, but it's okay. Like, that's what I mean. Like go into it with expectations that, but if our market, you know, when we did event stuff, yeah, our market does get bigger for those things, right? Cause we're trying to reach people that come into it, then it's different. But if we're just selling here, then it just like, you know, I don't care even if it's Kelowna, we're not going to get the same reach as if I'm downtown LA. It just, you're just not, but it's okay. Does it not get frustrating that like, if you're going to give this presentation in five years, all these symbols yeah. are going to be different. Not even five years. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, generous. Like, I'm, I'm probably the youngest Swallow and Miller person in this room or close to it. And at 34, like, I get a dirty at having to learn new things. Like, that's how it is. And I'm a software engineer. Like, the tech is not difficult, but it's time consuming. It is. So, for, but for me, I think I go back to understand who your audience is pick one or two platforms max and just be really good at them. Not to work, like I said, I'm not, I'm not, like I, I'm not, I'm not on Instagram, I'm not on Snapchat, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm not on Facebook, I do a little bit of Twitter and I'm on YouTube. So I'm like two and a half of these. And this, is, and this is what I do for a living, right? So I don't, I don't, I can't. Like I learn it because I need to know it for our clients, but I'm, I'm the one that, and again, everyone's different. You, you, you'll talk to another agent and says, you need to be on every single one of these. We've got to create a bunch of content. I'm not like that. I'm just, I'm, my mind is think like people are busy. My head only can fit so much stuff in it. I just want to talk to my audience. If Rob's my, my like if Rob's my persona, where's Rob? Oh, he's on LinkedIn. Well, that's where I'm going to focus on then. Period. Yeah. Right? And I, I think you really need to look at the capacity of your business. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, this is a few years ago when I was managing Shushwak Tourism, but Twitter, like Twitter was big then, and literally I could not keep up with the feedback. I couldn't, and if you don't keep up with the feedback, then it, you're, it drops off, right? So we, we had to pick, there was two of us in the office managing, you know, this big region, so we had to pick, we picked two, and that's what we did. And it just was the capacity of our organization. Yeah. You know, and maybe we were missing a bit, and and we did also have a marketing company that helped us with that, but we really had to look at what we could do. Yeah, I mean, but you're right. It literally is like every week, there's something in, in AI, literally I get a newsletter every morning, there's something new and I'm not even exaggerating. Yeah. Every day there's something new in AI, right? So I it, love the AI piece in that you can, like I'm yeah. all about the yeah. you know, automating things For sure. over all the platforms. Yeah. But it's still, I, I just find it's it hard. Very, yeah. Well, and I think it's hard for, it's harder for, the businesses in this room, right? Like, so if you're a big company and you have a marketing department, if you're like, then it's, that's their job. Tell us, that's their job, right? And, but you know, I argue actually that, I actually think we have advantages over them because I've, we've worked with Telus. It takes them for freaking ever to make a decision. Like, I'm not even, I'm not exaggerating. Stuff would sit for a year. Like I'm not, right? So I think with small businesses, I'm like, let's own some channels and let's be able to pivot quickly. And let's, that's how, that's the advantage we have over the bid. We're not going to outspend Lululemon and tech. Like I'm not silly, but we can outmaneuver them because we, we know them. I guarantee we know the market here. You guys know the market here better than any of those big companies. Guaranteed, right? We talked about personality last on your website. The, but I think we're mentioning, I can't remember who we said, like they go to the about us page a lot because that's what's important. Right, that's what's important. And I do this talk a lot where I say, I don't know, like Facebook doesn't spend any money in our market. I guarantee you, I don't know. I never see little Johnny's hockey team brought to you by sponsored by Facebook. 
right? Right, so let's try to like, that's our advantage in here. So let's pick a couple platforms, let's know who we're talking to and let's just, do, let's just use those. Like, I honestly feel, like I don't think we have one client that does, and you know, we have lots of clients that do all of these. Typically it's one or two platforms that we do really well. They might own them. I say own your channels. What I mean by that, register all the channels in your brand, but you don't have to be active on it. Own the Facebook, if you, even if you don't use it, own LinkedIn, your brand name, so no one else can take it. Like just own them, but you don't have to be active on them. And we, and we did that too. We owned Absolutely. all of them, but we just, like we said, we just couldn't manage. Yeah, you know, it's hard. So, and, and we would, I mean, we would go through, and we had a platform where we pushed, you know, everything pushed out, but, you know, there was, it, we just couldn't do it. No, it's hard. Yeah. Um, real quickly, uh, first party data is so important. What this means is on your database, like newsletter, like it, like you want, you want that connection, that one-to-one -one connection with your, with your clients. And there's a lot of like, you can buy secondary data or third party data. It doesn't work nowadays. Like you buy lists. It's don't waste your money. Honestly, it, people don't want it. Like, especially in Canada, there's, there's a lot of lockdown when it comes to privacy. The U S is wild, wild west. It really is. But here, and I, and I actually prefer, I prefer the Canadian version. Like I don't want my email sold to anybody to market to. But if I have a one-on-one -on -one connection with your business and I'm interested, I'm buying a house. Well, guess what? I'm interested, right? Or I'm like, so I think that, I, I think it's really important to start, like I'm big, big, big believer of creating your first party data, creating your database on that. Um, this is a lot of growth on this. I don't know, social commerce is actually selling right within the platforms like TikTok, Instagram, like selling, not leaving, you know, click the button and you buy right there. Like that's massive right now. We're seeing a lot of that happening and the younger generation is comfortable buying this way. Like I'm not yet right but the the generation that's coming up and my kids and this is the way they buy they see something on TikTok, they push a button and then literally next day it's delivered to the house like we're seeing that a lot more of it um but it's a growing trend so if you're in e-commerce at all right if you're selling anything you you need to start looking at social commerce for sure for sure like even more than we talked about sort of Amazon, we have some clients sell Amazon. Amazon takes like your first born when you sell something, right? Like they're, but they're big, I get why, right? Cause they're a massive, they're open up your audience, but your margins are so, so tiny on it. So, but this it's yours, right? So, so there's some opportunity here when it comes to social commerce. Um, I'm a big believer in a couple of like non-marketing things that are seen out there to me where people don't see this is employee activation. Like if you have a team, make sure that your team's like, it's so important that, you know, bad attitude, people won't buy from you, right? It's really important and to me. This is marketing. Like they're like, this is a hundred percent marketing. I talked in the first session, your brand is not just your logo, right? So all these things are super poor. So I just say like, get your team involved. If you have a team, I don't care if it's a team of one or a team of 50, get them involved, make sure they're bought in, talk to them, activate with them, like make sure that they're bought into the brand. I don't care what the brand is. Like that's super important on that side of it, right? So, um, Voice search, we talked about that last time. So people are actually doing a lot more of the, you know, in a vehicle, a lot, all new vehicles, you just talk to them. There's no more pushing buttons, right? You can say, where's the local ca cafe? And it'll tell you like, so most vehicles, I haven't used a lot. I don't use a lot of voice search on my phone yet. Like I have, I use notes, like when I'm driving, I'm like, oh, I have an idea. I'll talk to it that way. Um, but your phones, just so you know, if you're talking and you have, your location services and all that turned on. If you're talking like right now and say I'm talking about a brand and you go and you're like, oh, I got, a, I got an ad for Nike. It's listening to you and it will serve you ads. So think about that. Like iPhones will do that, right? So, um, so if you're always wondering what, well, we're just talking about that. That's weird. No, it's not weird. They're actually, it's listening to you. And it's li like in, in a lot of times, even with Alexa's and the home voice stuff, like it will listen. Now you can turn that off. Most people don't turn it off because they don't even know, right? So um, I'm gonna try to play this video. Hopefully you guys hear it it's really quick and let's see if it works. I think it comes off my computer though. Oh yeah, it's okay. Oh, maybe it's good. I think the internet's just buffering. I might just share it with you guys just for... Alexa, ask Patron for a cocktail recipe. 
Would you like to search by cocktail type, flavor or occasion? You can also say, surprise me. I like a margarita. I found 223 citrusy in margarita recipes. Say the name of the recipe you'd like. Patron Classic Margarita. Great. Combine liquid ingredients in a cocktail shaker and shake vigorously with ice to chill. Strain onto fresh ice in a rocks glass and garnish with a lime wedge. This classic take on a Patron so, so you guys get like, that's, that was all done through voice search. Like it just, and I mean the video they just showed for, for, to show what, but basically you can go and say, Hey, I want to make a margarita. How do I do it? And they're like, just do this. Or I need to make a recipe. How do I make homemade salsa? And they'll just tell you like, if you're, we're, we're starting to see more and it, it's starting to integrate even, there's some new fridges that you can buy that are voice activated. Right, and we'll, we'll know that you can program it and say, oh, you're, you're out of milk. And you're like, push a button and guess what? It adds to your order and the ne in next order, your grocery order, milk shows up. Like, it, it not like this isn't futuristic, it's actually happening right now. There's, this stuff is happening, right? So it's coming into our markets on that as well. So um, video marketing, I talk a lot about, I won't spend tons of time on that just for, I know we're, we're gonna, we only got about nine minutes, so 10 minutes. So um, it's, we're seeing massive video marketing. Um, I just say again, YouTube is a great one to start on. If you're gonna pick one, YouTube's a great one to start on. Not worry about TikTok, all this stuff, but definitely there's, there's power of doing YouTube marketing. Um, most of us will search that way. There's data that shows like a short, people would rather watch a short, I always say that, people would rather watch a short video than read a paragraph. It's just the way that we are. It's just the way that we, uh, and then I find what I love about even short videos is that they're shareable. Like, oh, did you see this video? It's really cool. You typically don't share an article, right? You typically will share videos, which is neat. It does rank. So this is actually, I watch a lot of this guy. So um, Neil Patel, if you are curious ever about learning, it's a little bit, sometimes he's a little bit over my head, but look at the power of his, if you search in, I put, pay-per-click campaign and I hit video, it's all him. Like, but he just creates tons of video content. We can do this in our market because I guarantee no one is. In your space, you can own this, 100%. And people will hit, you know, where it's up top, or says images, news, video, people will hit the video button. This is YouTube. This is pretty much what you're seeing is, it's pulling in because YouTube, it will rank. It will rank. So he, he's, he's, he creates these videos all the time, these little videos, and you can see some of them range in you know, length, a couple of minutes and whatever it may be, but just to show the power of what video can do when you're, when you're creating video. It's not just putting it on your website or social, it's actually will rank into when people are searching for stuff as well. Live video is super important. It's another video on here. I'll just literally play two seconds of it if it buffers. If not, it's not a big deal, but these are people that are just grabbing their cameras and going live on social media. Right, so they're like, this guy here does, if it comes up, he actually does uh, a website, uh, how, to, how to like, kind of like a website 101 and people can call in and text questions. Hey, I'm having problems with my website, what do you think? So it's just him, a mic and a camera and he live streams them. And now he's creating, yeah. So he's creating, I think this was a minute. So today we're gonna be ripping apart websites every Friday at 10.30 UK so he, time. He does this every Friday. He does, he does a call-in show as well. And it's an, about an hour long. He just sits in front of his camera unedited because you can see a couple times he's like, oh, I don't know if the audio is working. He, like no, n not overthinking. But then he creates a whole bunch of clips from this and he creates a bunch of social channels or, or sorry, social content. And it's all hit basically, you know, now what I recommend if you're going to do this, buy yourself a good microphone and some lighting. And if you don't know what you're going to buy, I'm sure... He could, I can't tell you what it is, but he can probably share. I, I don't. Like, and the other thing I'd recommend is getting a really good intro and extra design. Like get a really cool you know, f start and finish to all your videos that you, once you do it, you do it once. But you, know, you can go live stream, just live stream. Just pick up, use your phone if you have to. It's not a big deal, right? So it, we're seeing a lot of this, a lot of this happening right now and, and works really well. Um, we're, I think a lot of people talk about, this slide's really pixelated, but marketing to millennials, but there's Gen Z coming that's very powerful. So let's not, like, and, and there's some interesting sort of, they love, they love brands that are authentic. They love to look at things that, um, how to save money. They're 100% mobile. 
they're not using desktops, they're not using any of that sort of stuff. So it's a market that we need to pay attention. It's typically born between 97 and 2010 is who this group is. Um, and it's, it's, you know, that's where you need, if this is a market you're looking at, Instagram, Snapchat, that's where they're at, right? Then you're like, okay, if this is my market, let's just own Instagram. Don't worry about LinkedIn. This is where I need to be if this is my market that I'm trying to reach. Um, this is really big right now. We're seeing a lot of this is responsible consumerism is people want to align with brands that are, are seen as responsible to the environment. 100%. Like that's an important part, especially that younger group that I just showed you. It's super important to them. Us old folks, I don't know, half of us probably don't even recycle. But, um, I, I, you know, I, but really though, it's definitely the older generation. It's just less important. Like my mom who's you know, in her 70s, this is less important to her, 100%. They just, they just didn't grow up that way. Where they, like my kids, really important to them. They're the ones who are like, what? Like they make sure everything is recycled. And like it's super important to them, right? So the, align that with your brand as much as possible. Uh, we talked about geofencing, hyper-local marketing. You can really target people right to the household level, right? So use that to your advantage. And we're seeing a lot of that happening. Um, I'm a massive believer in this. I said employee, like is customer advocacy is massive to me. Like there's a buying journey where I said most of the clients stop at like, I got a client, now I go back to the start and try to get another client. And I'm like, okay, once you have the client, what do we do? How do we make sure that they become super at, like advocates of your business, talk about your business. And it's a lot, you know, it's a lot less expensive to acquire, or it's a lot more expensive to acquire a new client than to get a current client to either refer or spend more money with us. Like it's an old banking term I learned to share a wallet where it's like, how do I, like, I, I know we have clients, like I'm a good example. We have clients that didn't know for the longest time that we could print for them. Right, so they're spending, their, they're sending their printing elsewhere, and it's like shame on me that I didn't tell Robin that we have a print shop. That's my problem, not her problem, right? So, or hey, do you know we do websites? Like just th little things like that. And I think every, you know, when we work with law firms, we work with uh, a st an aesthetics company. I would say 80% of the budget is spent on this, and 20% of the budget is spent on new acquisition. Like it's completely reversed. And to me, there's a goal from a business. He wants to, obviously, he wants to grow his business and doesn't always have to be done by new people, okay? So that's a big part that we're seeing a lot of more. So um, I'm gonna go quick because there are a few things that we're, yeah. So we're gonna do a little bit of dessert. So some things you can do. So one thing I always say is yeah, like embrace your, the, any emerging technologies, like learn about them. You can't be everywhere, I get it. You can't be everywhere, like, but, you know, I think take advantage of even just things like this, these morning talks, like this is rely on us for that stuff. Hey Rob, like what's new in the last few months that realized I'm, I'm happy to always do that stuff. And it's, it is changing. Like, unfortunately, I wish I can just tell you that next week do this. It, like, I don't even know. Like I've been in this for 20 plus years and I'm, st I'm still learning. It's just the way that it is. But, but there is, like I just say, take, stay ahead of it. Use AI what you, we can, like use it to your advantage, play around with it. Like and it, it, it's not ours. Like I said, we, I create things in minutes now. Like it's gonna take you some time. If you haven't used it before, it'll take you a little bit to get used to it. But once you get used to it, it will 100% save you time, guaranteed, right? Um, I think, consumers change think about that even your audience is going to change the way that as they get older or things get introduced you just ask like we're just asking well what as a business owner things change well guess what from a consumer things change as well TikTok wasn't here a few years ago or I don't know as I get older I have kids my things change like so think about how your clientele changes and then even the market that you're in changes Who's coming into this market, right? We just did a talk at, in Salmon Arm last week. We're working with a client there and we're seeing a lot of more um, foreign people coming, a lot of people from the UK. Like, so I, I took a step back from there and go, okay, what is ECDEV doing? Where, where's the attraction? Where are they marketing their dollars and what's coming into our market? Because those are new consumers for us, right? And how to talk to someone, like this was a credit union there, the banking system in the UK is a whole lot different than the banking system in Canada. So there's a whole education gap that we might have to think about. There's a whole different campaign we have to do. So start thinking about that. Like wh what is it looking like around us and how is that changing and how do we talk to those people, okay? Um, there's, there's no excuse to not personalize and you know, really focus on customer experience, zero. There's, there's, 
this is the easiest thing for people to do to, for me. Once you have a client, make sure you treat them like gold. 100%. To me, that's like, there's no excuse not to do that, right? So I think if you lose a client because of that, it's like shame on the business owner. And we're, we do it as well over the years. Like, oh, crap, I wish I would have done a better job with that client, right? Put a process in place. New client comes in, this happens. At six months mark, this happens. Like, just, there's, it's so, I don't think you understand how powerful or how important that client is to you, right? So, and to me, a client can be all different, all different things. A member of an association is the client in my mind. Make sure we're treating them right, right? If it's an event, if they come to an event, how do we connect with them afterwards? What do we do? What can we do different, right? So that, that, that's a really important part for me. Um, don't neglect sustainability and social responsibility. The younger generation, is, uh, for sure, it's important to them, 100%. So how do, you, how do you integrate that into your brand? Is it supporting nonprofits? Is it, uh, there's, I don't know, there's a whole bunch, if you, you, if you Google this stuff, there's tons of things that you can do, but make, if you're seen as a little bit more of a, you care about your community and you care about the environment, it, it is important. Now, do it authentically. Don't just do it because you think you're just gonna get business out of it because people will see through the bullshit, right? They will, right? So make sure it's done authentically for sure. Um, use data, we'll talk about that in the next session. It's very big on this, like don't just guess. There is data out there. What is analytics? What, what's happening on your social channels right now? Good, bad, or indifferent. It's okay if you're like, oh, they're a disaster, it's okay. That's where we need to start from. That's the point we're going to use. So I won't talk a little bit, a lot about this because I think we're going to do another session with Alice that we'll talk about sort of this side of it. So, so just to real quickly, some take home stuff for you guys um, that you can start doing. I would say conduct an audit. Again, I'm happy to do it. Just send, send me an email. I'm happy to look at uh, your website and even look at opportunities where I think you guys can integrate AI into your website like, or your business. Happy to do that. Like, please, please use that to your advantage if you can. Um, look at some market research and people are like, oh, well, how am I supposed to do market research? Well, lots of data in www. It'll give you lots of data what's happening with trends, but ask people, like don't be scared to ask your, your current clientele, you know, do they, are they liking, are they not? Post something on social. Hey, what do you like to see? Do something different you'd like to see from us? Like they'll tell you. They'll 100% tell you. Don't be scared to ask. Then people are scared because they're like, oh, what happens if they tell us we're doing? You need to know. I'd rather know today that you're not happy with me from a perspective than when it's too late, right, to do that. So ask that. Um, develop some strategy around personalization. I think, that, like, again, if you use MailChimp or any of that sort of stuff, it will start doing that stuff for you automatically, right? So the email that you send out, the one you send Robin can be different than the one you send me, but you don't have to do anything. Right, so think about that. Like that, that's where you start seeing some really cool activity. Car dealerships have been doing this for forever, or automotive, is that if I buy my trucks from Toyota and I like to buy a black pickup truck, when it's lease renewal time, my email or my direct mail will have a black truck on it. And if Robin buys a red whatever Tacoma, her vehicle, her email will be a red Tacoma because they know that's what's important. It automatically will do that's person like it's that, that to that level of personalization that they've been doing it forever on that sort of stuff. Right. So, um, again, we'll do some Dan Alex training. Um, sometimes I spend some time talking about this, but we'll just do it in the other session when we kind of book that. And I think if you guys are available, but I would, I would recommend you come to that because I think that's where it gets nitty gritty, which is really cool. Um, Experiment like it's so like honestly, it's it doesn't cost a lot of money to experiment on social right now because sometimes clients say, well, how much should I put on a boost? Like twenty five bucks, fifty bucks. Like I'm not talking about thousands of dollars. Like try it. I don't know. Write a blog and boost it on fifty Facebook for fifty dollars and see what happens. Like like you're, you're like honestly like just try sometimes and you'll be surprised. Like some like all of our clients will do boost sometimes through like TikTok, YouTube, whatever, and we'll put like fifty bucks, hundred bucks max, and we're like, holy shit, like. This thing went through the roof, or sometimes we do and go, like, God, oh, it didn't really work. No one really liked our content. Well, guess we won't post that content. They were only 50 bucks in, right? So I think just play around with it sometimes and just see what works. It's okay. And like, but you don't have to put a lot of money, is all I'm saying. Like, literally 25 to 50 dollars will give you some good data, right? So, because your cost per impression on those things are pretty cheap. Ask your clients for feedback. Don't be, don't be scared in what they're going to say. Use it to your advantage for sure. So, um, stay informed. 
we ask like things are changing all the time. So stay informed as much as possible. Uh, what's out there, what's not out there. Look what your consumer, your competitors, sometimes even look at your competitors if you have competitors, what they're doing as well. So I did put some AI tools in here for you guys. I, I put a list of things like if you're wondering, I need to create landing pages. I need, and these are, just, I wanted to put things that are different. Uh, there's a lot. And I think this, this will go around. I think we're sharing this, but you know, like, yeah, MailChimp does landing pages as well and stuff, but I just wanted to put ones that people maybe not have heard of. Like we use this one like religiously in our agency. You can throw any video in there or a podcast and it'll cut up a bunch of chunk. It'll, it'll create like five or six 15 second clips for you automatically. Um, you can either really cool, even a podcast, it'll, it'll learn your voice and you say, oh crap, I meant to say this at this at the 134 mark. It automatically will just change the word for you. Like in voice, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's actually pretty cool stuff that it does. Um, so Zapier is one that pretty much integrates into a whole bunch of stuff. So Zapier is sort of a tool we use a lot that it'll integrate into a whole bunch of stuff. So there's a few things for you guys to kind of look like. I use Unsplash a lot. It's literally free stock images that you can use. Um, that I, you know, I use them in my presentations and things like that. So some really neat ones that you guys can use. Jasper is great. It's pretty cost effective. If you're like, I, I don't have time to write blogs, Jasper AI will write blogs for you. Really, really cool. cool. Which one did you say is, is free stuff? Uh, Unsplash. The royalty free images. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of stuff. It's kind of fun to play around with. Mm -hmm. so. I use that Zapier one all the time. Yeah. I started automating things for other businesses. Amazing. Like for marketing and, and also just segmentation. Yeah, um, it's great. It's fabulous. Yeah, we use a and lot of content. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, it, and it needs. And I tried to put ones that don't cost a lot because you're like, oh, this costs a whole bunch of money. Like, like, not, not at all. And again, you can't do them all. I get that you can't do them all, but but some things are up. So, um, just to end, um, and again, I apologize, we went a little bit over, but when everything sort of comes together, this is a really cool campaign that uh, maybe it's going to play. Coke did. Um, and I know you say, well, it's Coke, but it literally costs them next to nothing. So they basically use, this is when AI first came out. They actually came up with a real cool campaign. And if it plays here, it's sometimes, like I said, just buffers. but I'll send the video around but pretty much what they did I'll kind of I'll give you the Coles notes you can see when the video comes around is that they created this AI site so this is all AI generated where you can go in and you can pick an image uh, edit it if you want but it's all prompt so you don't you don't have to be a designer so anyone you'll see as it goes through the video it's like make it this or make it this person and then what they did is they picked some of the images that were created through AI so no one did any work and they put them up on billboards so they actually put them up on billboards all over the place automatically. And this changed in real time. So he, this is one of his that he did, obviously. But if you, if you, the next time it flipped around, it could be Rob's image that showed up on the billboard. All AI generated. So I think, I, I literally, I mean, they bought, obviously they own a bunch of billboards, but the actual AI campaign to do it literally cost them the design of a landing page. And that's it. Everything else was AI integrated. And, and then they did this, just this winter, they did a winter version where you can go in and like, because they, they created Santa Claus. So you guys know that, but Coca-Cola actually created Santa Claus. So you could go in and actually start now creating like different, like, and they're gonna put them on some of their packaging through Christmas and stuff. So, and it, again, it literally costs them almost nothing because it's all AI generated images, which is super cool, but it just integrated you know, and how cool now I get it. Like I said, you know, they had digital boards here you can do, but I could think of so many cool applications that don't have to be digital. It could be the landing page of your website gets changed every day for an image that someone creates or your, it gets featured on your social channels once a week. Like just some really cool things that you can do that just gets people involved, right? So back to like maybe event stuff, like how cool is like submit your best picture from this weekend's event and we're gonna pick one and it's gonna be featured on our social channel channels and website for a week or something, right? So you can automate that. 100% automated. ChatGPT will now, like I said, will create images. So the, if you, when you watch the video, sorry, I apologize because it just it's buffering, but it'll show you sort of how they did it. They just loaded up a bunch of images and automatically create it. It automatically creates it. So 
some really cool things that you can do with it. So, so this is the power of when it, everything sort of comes together and even Coke's using it. Like I said, like um, they have billions of dollars, but they created this really cool campaign that literally cost them nothing to do, right? Now they have an audience, I get that. But again, to me, it's expectations of where our, our, if, my, if the client I'm working with is their market is Vernon, then that's all I care about. I don't care that someone in New York didn't see it. It doesn't bother me. Right. So um, and that's the hardest sometimes the hard things to wrap around. But but again, I apologize. I went a little bit over um, and I found this quote. I thought it was really cool. Marketing is like cookie, cookie. You need the right ingredients, a good recipe and a little bit of flair to make something people will love. Right. So it really is true. Like from when we're kind of walk away from this, for me, it's like just think a little bit differently. Like it's OK. That's that's why I kind of encourage people in our market. Sometimes we get stuck in a rut. I feel like especially I, and I say our market, like the Thompson Oak and Ogden, like we, we that's where most of our clients are, is that we kind of do the same thing we always did. Uh, we bought a billboard. We've doing that forever. We've been running Facebook ads. Well, we might. We tried it. Like just think about all the technology out there for you and actually start using it to your advantage. And it doesn't matter if you're a team of one or if you're a team of 100, you can, you can use this stuff to your advantage. And if you get stuck, like reach out. Like I'm, I'm, I'm happy to help, Robin's here. Like reach out to the, like you guys are lucky that you have a network you can reach out to because a lot of people don't just reach out or maybe even people within this group, like you, like you use it, right? You, you, you've used it, reach out. Hey, how have you used that? Like I see what you're doing is really, I guarantee what people within your community will probably help on that sort of stuff. But that's the thing I was saying, just make sure that you guys try some new things and, and try to implement some stuff that would might work for your business, yeah. So, um, and I don't mean to keep everybody later. If you need to go, I understand. But it's really only to after eight. <laughs> We're supposed to just get started. We're just getting started. Um, so I have a question about marketing. Yeah. Because it's a question we get uh, pretty much every day. It's on our social. We get phone calls. We yeah. get emails about it. So what do we do about folks that aren't digital yet? Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like, people that so, are... I don't know. I'll get somebody that will phone. Yeah. And they'll say, I drove past the fairgrounds and there was a whole bunch of cars there. Oh, I see. And what was going on and how come I didn't know about it? Emails. Right? And so... Oh, we don't, we don't care about those people. <laughs> 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 people aren't listening so, to my people are going to lost their no. news yeah. to her. Yeah. And some of them are older. Yeah. Um, they're they're concerned about being on digital platforms. They're yeah. worried about mm -hmm. spam and mm -hmm. getting scammed and all that stuff. So suggestions for that? Do we just do the old poster campaign and we print yeah. out posters so, and take them around? Hundred percent. Like I say, back to like know your audience. So um, we've done. Yeah, but but it is. But we've done we've done a lot of work in the North Shoe Swap, where uh, I, up to like I don't know five years ago, working with Debbie, there like uh, some of the people didn't even have like high speed internet in that market, right? So so yeah, you have to pivot. Like so, direct mail worked good, postering work worked okay. Like there's nothing. What I'm trying to show you is trends on how the world's going, where it's going. <laughs> Good breakfast. Um, where the world's going and and what's happening in the market, but please know your audience. Like I said, we have a a, a, um, a clinic in Kelowna that we've been doing work with our pharmacy. Facebook doesn't work for them. We can run all the Google ads we want. It, it's okay. Direct mail works for them. And the old, we do ballots on the counter. They, old, they like to fill out their name every month. We give away a prize. We do, like, we do flyers still. That's what works for them, and it's okay. We do very little digital. Like, so I'm not saying, please don't take it as go back and go 100% digital. If that's your audience, use this stuff for, is, but if your audience in our markets, like in our, and I say our markets, it doesn't matter if it's like, Camelot's is the same way, there's an older demo. Like, again, I use my, I always like looking at sort of internally, go, my mom's a good example, she's 75, 76. Um, she, she used to like getting the newspaper. We have no news. Camels doesn't have any newspaper anymore. Like, and it's a population of 400. We don't have a daily, we don't have a weekly. We have no newspaper anymore, right? And that's why she's, she's scared her flyers. And here's what's on sale at Safeway. And I'm going to go buy a steak here. And I'm going to go buy, like, that's what she, that was her routine. Now she's like, what do I do? Right? So direct mail worked for, for sure. She does, she gets her mail every morning. She, she does, she's on her iPad every day though. 
right? So she does, but she doesn't want to be marketed on Facebook. Like my mom will not click an ad, right? But direct mail works for her or signage works for her because she's driving around and she'll see things. Like, so just know the audience and don't just be um, one thing or, or another. The other, the other thing I'll just add before you add is, is sometimes um, email is a great thing for it because some, some of them are comfortable if they sign up for it, they're comfortable getting email messages from, especially from your organization, right? Like, cause they're not, you're not selling anything. They're comfortable. They're okay. They are comfortable doing that sort of stuff. Right. So, so Patty, the other thing that, that to address that, especially for that older generation that doesn't want to go and get digital is we could have a, um, a newsletter that's on the desk because these people are still going out mm -hmm. so they could come to the chamber and pick up a newsletter, a newsletter that's there, the whatever, 10th of every month. And then some of the places that we know they're going to frequent like the pharmacies, and ask you, put them there. We yeah, we could ask to have them put there because that's where they go. If they go out, they're going to those kinds of places. And we do do a monthly like what's happening. Yeah, the bits and bites and, uh, and well, we do actually an events calendar. Yeah, yeah. but the bits and bites too could be added to that. Well, the challenge. Well, that's a whole different conversation. But the challenge yeah. about the bits and bites is more that it's for our members. True. Not that's true. Specific, yeah. Right? They might get a bunch of stuff that they yeah. don't want. But yeah, we we try. I guess it was more a conversation about is that still a reality? One hundred percent. Like doing the flyers, especially and, in our market. If right. you're again, if you're in Vancouver, maybe not as much. But yeah. here, our right market here. for sure. There's a little little coffee shop talk magazines in the shoe shop yeah. do really well. Mm -hmm. Our country right. news, right? Yeah, they do really we, yeah. well. Yeah. We spend a lot, of, a, yeah. lot a lot, a lot for him yeah. um, for an advertisement. Because yeah. yeah. a lot of people just know you're it. just talking to one demographic within that. Just yeah. as long as you can wrap, like, then there's a whole other demographic that's you know. Did, so you kind of you know here you might have to do a little bit of both in order to get that demo. So, and sorry. I never got to put our calendar though at the pharmacies, which is uh, yeah, the places that we know the seniors are going to yeah. frequent the grocery store, the pharmacies, yeah. right? Asbest doesn't want it. <laughs> My comment was just about email. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. And that, yeah. I was curious if those yeah. Mom, yeah. She open email? No, she doesn't. But 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 she doesn't, right? But but I'm saying she. There are especially because. My mom's not the type of person that would be an audience to what Tati's question was. She, she's not an event person, but if she was an event person, yes. Okay. Right, she's just not. Like, but she'll get Costco flyers still. She loves her Costco flyer at the end of the month and she goes and literally circles what's on. Like, but that, that, that's still important because a lot of, we've worked with retailers, they use the newspapers, I hate to say it, as a, as a wrap to get their flyers out, right? Because most people like, the newspaper the down obviously we know what the downside of newspaper is that you would get the newspaper the next day and reporting on the the hockey game that happened the night before and i'm like well everybody already knows the score so what if the but people want the flyers i'm like well then just create your own flyer and just mail it out now or you know you can do unaddressed mail pretty cheap like unaddressed mail if anyone's used it it's pretty cheap it's I don't know, I don't know what the postage on it, like 10 cents, 11 cents, 15 cents, whatever it is cheap, where then address mail, which means I write my name on, to, do, to Rob, it costs like the cost of a stamp, which is, I don't know, it seems like it's $87 now, right? But, but unaddressed, is, you pretty much say, I just wanted to hit a certain postal code, and it drops into everybody's mailbox, right? So, and if that's your market, 100% use it, 100%, right? And it does work, we've seen it work. For sure. We still have clients that get billboards. I'm not saying don't do that stuff. It just needs to fit your demographic and what you do. Now, I argue like with billboards, it's a brand awareness. You're not selling anything off a billboard. I, I would argue that till it would end. No one's driving, unless you're McDonald's or Tim Hortons and I'm traveling. I'm like, oh crap, there's a Tim Hortons coming. Great. And then you look out for it. If not, you're not going to just like, oh, I need to go buy a house. Like that just doesn't, <laughs> you know, it's brand awareness. It is. It's brand awareness, and that's that's where the important thing is. Yeah, you know, we know like realtors love billboards. They love putting their face because it's just brand awareness. The day that you're going to buy, you're thinking about buying a house. You hope you make the connection to the person you saw in the billboard. That that's what, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You just got to have the budget to build brand awareness because billboards aren't cheap. And I'm not saying don't do them. Like I said, we do have clients that do them. Um, you know, you, tourism. A lot of tourists like big whites and. Revso Mountain Resort, you see billboards because it's just they're creating brand awareness is what they're doing, right? So, any other questions, comments? Some good, really good comments. So this one it was awesome. But anything else? Any other comments, questions, thoughts?